I was just taking a look at another interesting power station from Browie. So this is their third model. You know, I've taken a look at their other two models on this channel. This one here is their flagship model. It has this built-in solar panel, yeah, that flips up. And they just released this model as well, which doesn't have a built-in solar panel, but it's much smaller. So this one here is kind of what a lot of people have been asking for. You know, to have this, this really cool built-in solar panel in a smaller power station. So something that's, you know, more compact, more portable, lightweight. So they've, they've delivered it with this. This is the C300. And they've kind of taken this folding solar panel design a step further as well. <laughs> now they're calling it a hidden solar panel with a satellite design. So, you know, why are they calling it that? Well, think about it. It's like, you know, when they launch a satellite up into space, it comes out of the rocket, and then once it gets in orbit, it has to deploy the solar panels, right? That's basically what you're going to be doing with this thing because, you know, it flips up like the original model, yes, but then you got to, you know, further deploy these other two side panels, don't you? So this is just kind of a fun, it's kind of a fun thing, isn't it? It's not... You know, it's it's kind of more of a party trick. It's not really the best design, though. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool, but the one thing you got to note is you don't really want to use this built-in solar panel in like really high temperatures, right? I mean, if you're out in the desert and it's like 100 degrees out, and you got the sun, obviously you got to put it in the sun. You know, it's you're going to cook, <laughs> you're going to cook this whole thing, right? So you really want to ideally use this thing with this solar panel deployed in like cooler temperatures where it's not going to really overheat the entire unit, right? Because you can't avoid keeping the batteries, the inverter, all the other components in the hot sun, can you? With this solar panel built in. Now there's, you can use other solar panels as well. So we'll talk about the charging We'll talk about all that stuff a little bit later. There's actually more I want to talk about right up front. And that's that's actually has to do with the output ports. So it says, yeah, you get seven output ports. And so you're going to be able to power small electronic devices with this thing, right? It's This is only 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. So it's a small battery, 284 watt hours, small inverter, 300 watts. So, and then you got, you know, you got other ports as well for your USB stuff, you know, small electronics. You're going to be able to power that stuff. You're going to be able to power a heated blanket, right? I mean, that's kind of one of the best things, one of the most efficient ways to stay warm is a heated blanket. Yeah, you can power that. Hey, <laughs> you know, you can power your fish tank, right? So, yeah, it's a small unit. doesn't put out a whole lot of power, but it's still very usable. Now, here's the thing. It's not quite as usable as you might hope because they don't have a regulated 12 volt on this thing, which is really weird. You know, it's really weird. In fact, there's, as you can see, there's two barrel ports and the car socket. So there's actually, you know, a lot of output ports, but yeah, the problem is 12 to 16.8 volts. So now you might be wondering, you know, why is that? Why, you know, why is it such a large range? Yeah, because it's using whatever the battery's voltage is at. That's what these ports output. So basically every other power station has a regulated 12 volt outlet, don't they? It's usually regulated somewhere around 13 volts. And that's kind of like the perfect range, the per or the perfect output for 12 volt appliances, car, fridge, you know, whatever, anything 12 volt, it typically likes around 13 volts, you know, 12 to 14 volts, really. So 16.8 is just way too high. In fact, you could damage a 12 volt appliance. And so basically the way this works is 12 volts will be at 0%. So when the battery in this thing's at 0%, it'll be at about 12 volts. And when it's at 100%, so when it's fully charged, you gotta really be careful with this thing. Because, yeah, the DC outputs will be outputting 16.8 volts. And then, obviously, you know, halfway in between would, would also be halfway in between. So, 
yeah, just be careful with this thing. You know, be careful with it. If you really do need to use this with a 12 volt appliance, basically make sure the battery is at about 50% or less. Because that would give you somewhere around 14 volts or less, which would be fine. So, yeah, this is just, it's bizarre. I don't remember this being a problem on their other models. But here's the thing. Their other models are LFP batteries. They do have LFP batteries, both of them. The larger one and that smaller one. And LFP batteries don't necessarily need to have a regulated 12 volt because if you have four cells in series, the voltage range is kind of in the proper range for a 12 volt appliance. You know, there's less of a spread. So it kind of stays kind of where you need it. You know, yes, it would be better still to have a regulated output, but you don't need it. But with this model, <laughs> with this model, you definitely need to have regulated 12 volt. And you might be saying, you know, why is this? Well, it's because these batteries our NMC. That's why you have that large voltage range. That's why you have it going up to over 16 volts when it's fully charged. So this is a bummer. You know, this is a bummer for several reasons, obviously, because the, the 12 volt outlet isn't really that usable. It's also a bummer because NMC batteries, you know, they don't have, they're not rated for as many life cycles. They don't quite have the safety rating. And this is really surprising for a product that's you know, they're telling you to put it out in the sun, <laughs> to put it out in the hot sun, you definitely want to have LFP batteries because LFP batteries can handle higher temperatures. So in case this whole thing does heat up when you're trying to solar charge this thing with that built-in solar panel, and that was the whole reason, you know, the original models did have LFP batteries or one of the main reasons. So this is just kind of a bizarre design choice from Browley. This is it's surprising too because they've had so much success with their other models you know i guess you know why is this it's because they tried to make this thing as lightweight and compact as possible right so i think that's why they went with nmc here's the problem though <laughs> 6.2 kilos that's like 14 pounds for this thing and this thing is 284 watt hours i mean let's just do a quick comparison here to the jackery 300 plus which is LFP batteries. That thing is only eight pounds. And if you get the little solar panel bundle that they sell, the little solar generator bundle that they sell, it includes a 40 watt solar panel that's only three pounds. So that combo is a total of 11 pounds. You get LFP batteries, about the same capacity roughly. And you get actually a 40 watt solar panel. So you get actually a larger solar panel as well. Now that solar panel doesn't have kickstands. So the actual input you'll probably see is comparable to this 30 watt panel. Because this one, you know, you can kind of align and angle it up. So it almost, the specs are almost identical. And yeah, the Jackery is just going to be lighter, isn't it? So this is the downside of having a built in solar panel. Yes, it's cool. Yes, it means all you got to do is carry one thing, bring one thing with you. But as you can see here, there's a lot of trade-offs. But this Browie does have a huge advantage over that Jackery when it comes to solar charging capability. Yeah, you can, you can actually double charge this thing, dual charge this thing from solar. Well, actually, it gets even better than that. So think about it. You got the 30-watt panel built in. You can connect a 100 watt panel, just your typical, you know, 18 volt, 100 watt panel. You can connect that at the same time and, and dual charge this thing simultaneously. But guess what? This Browie actually has a bi-directional USB-C input as well. So if you can find a solar panel that has a, com a compatible USB-C output, you know, you'll find a lot of solar panels do have USB-C output. It's just is it going to be compatible with it? That's kind of the, the question mark. You can find them, though. You can find them, you know. The MPPT is not going to be a question. USB-C, it is questionable. It is questionable, but it's possible. This is what I'm talking about here. It's, it's a possibility for you to actually connect a USB-C solar panel to this thing as well <laughs> and triple charge this thing, triple charge it from solar. So, yeah, imagine if you had a 100-watt solar panel with USB-C going into this thing as well. You know, you could 
potentially, I think you could probably get, you could definitely get over 150 watts going into this thing from solar. You might be able to get more than that. And that's where the Jackery is. There's only one solar input on that thing. It's just a USB-C input. That's it. It doesn't even have a proper MPPT, let alone, you know, a built-in solar panel, let alone another input. So this Browie is going to blow this thing out of the water when it comes to solar performance. The, the downside here is that if you want to charge this thing up from the wall, this Browie still uses a power brick. Yeah, still uses a power brick. It's going to be very slow. Whereas the Jackery has that bi-directional inverter that can be charged up in about I think it's somewhere around an hour and a half. So this thing's better for solar. The Jackery is much better for charging from grid power. And then just to wrap this video up, let's talk about the design real quick. You know, it's very similar to the C1000 with this kind of like military style, rugged briefcase design. Now, the one thing is the C1000 is actually available in two colors. You know, there's a black with orange and there's a black with green. So this C300 is, right now it's only available with the black and orange. So I think that'd be really cool if they would add the green, but actually I threw this thing in the Photoshop. Really what I think would look great and what would look fantastic is if they did a black with sand or a black with tan color. Let me know what you guys think of that.